So welcome. God welcomes all, strangers and friends. God's love is strong and it never ends. And as you can tell, I am not singing. One of these days, we will be able to sing again, to, but not today until we figure everything out. So welcome to all of you and welcome all of you people watching it online later in the day perhaps. We're glad you decided to join with us today and we're very sorry that we're having technical difficulties and you can't see us live. But we hope you'll enjoy it anyway. <clears throat> I don't think there are any big announcements today, so I am going to just move forward. If you do have a prayer request, there are pieces of paper up here, and you can write it on it. I will go over and get them uh, before prayer time off of our table. And our lovely flowers this morning are uh, thanks to Gail Stratton. So welcome to all of you. Oh, wait a minute. See? Now that's the other thing. I don't have an acolyte. This is what happens when the pastor does the acolyting. It's not done right on time. And we'll hope that that stays lit. <clears throat> we keep Sabbath during this strange season of the coronavirus in uncomfortable new ways. In masks or by digital devices, without handshakes or hugs. But the church, with the big C, has survived wars and pandemics, financial crisis and civil unrest, relying on the promise that who, wherever two or more are gather in the name of Christ, there the spirit of Christ will be found. And we extend that now to include those gathering with us virtually. It's times like these, the spirit is most needed. The work's not done. God's reign has not yet come. So let's gather in the name of Jesus. Let's proclaim it from our pulpits, whisper it into our masks, Sing it in front of our computers and know that all over the world, the Spirit of God is molding us, shaping us, recreating us into the body of Christ. Let us pray. Lord our God, where is there another God like you? A God of justice and unfailing love who stands by every promise made to her people, generation after generation. There is no other. You alone are God. And so we gather together to worship you, to give you thanks, to proclaim your greatness, to speak your praise, to seek your face, and to celebrate your faithful presence with us. We pray that your spirit would guide and inspire our worship. Open our lips to mouth your praise. Open our ears to hear your word. Open our eyes to see you at work among us. Open our hearts to receive your love. Let us offer ourselves to you, reflecting your grace and mercy always. Amen. And now I'm going to invite Sandra to come help and help me with a time for all ages. And just so you know, we live in the same household, so it's okay that she's standing closer than six feet to me. <laughs> so today we're going to tell you the story of, uh, you've probably heard it before. Is that right side up? Yeah. That's right side up. Okay. Okay. All right, we're going to come over here a little ways. Can you all see back in the back? Can you all see? Okay. This is Jonah. God went to Jonah and said, Jonah, I want you to go to the city of Nineveh and tell them that they need to stop being bad. They need to stop being evil and wicked. And Jonah said, uh, no way, God, I'm not going. I don't want to go there. 
I don't want to go there. That's a really awful place. I don't want to go. And Jonah said no to Nineveh. And he went down to a seaport. And he got on a boat. Because he was going to run away from God. So they started sailing to the farthest place they could sail in those days, which was Tarshish. And uh, then it started getting kind of windy <laughs> and stormy. Oh. Oh, oh, and, and oh, wow, what was happening? It was like, oh, the waves were getting really high and the wind was really fierce and it was awful. And, and the crew on the boat, they said, what is going on? Where's the crew? Okay, <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> they were throwing up. <laughs> they, were, they were all feeling like, oh my gosh, I'm really scared. What's happening? And Jonah says, well, I'm afraid it's my fault because I ran away from God. And and you better throw me overboard. And then God will be okay and it'll be calm again. Mm -hmm. uh, no. Oh, we don't want to do that. No, you don't want to do that. Okay. No. They didn't want to do that. They didn't want to throw. So the wind just got worse and worse. And it was, oh my gosh, it was a terrible. Okay. They and then changed they, their mind. They changed their mind and they threw Jonah <laughs> overboard. <laughs> and so Jonah was in the ocean going down, 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 down. Not oceans, Mediterranean Sea. Down, down, down. But it is salt water, I'm pretty sure. And, and then this came this big fish, which kind of looks like a whale. And it swallowed Jonah. Oh my goodness. Jonah was swallowed by the whale. And he was in the belly of the whale for three days and three nights. And it was dark and it was icky. Can you imagine what the belly of a whale looks like? Yeah, it was icky. So after three days and three nights, Jonah prayed to God and said, Okay, God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, God. And the whale, the fish, spit him up on dry land. And he happened to be very close to Nineveh. <laughs> so he said, All right, God, I'm going to Nineveh. I'm going to Nineveh. And when he arrived in Nineveh, he told them all, that they needed to repent and stop being bad and that God would forgive them if they did. And if they didn't, then God was going to destroy them. That's what jo Jonah was told to say. So he went and as soon as he got in the city, everyone in the city started changing. They said, okay, we won't be bad anymore. As soon as he started telling them what God had said, we won't be bad anymore, we'll change, we'll be good people. And they all repented. And then God didn't destroy them. And Jonah was ticked off. <laughs> Sorry, Jonah. <laughs> yeah. Jonah was mad because God was nice and had mercy on the people of Nineveh. So Jonah went outside of Nineveh and pouted <laughs> on a hill. And then God grew, up, grew this big, wonderful, viney tree thing to shade Jonah from the hot sun. And, uh, and overnight, a worm came, no, not the sun yet. Okay. <laughs> overnight, the worm a worm came and ate the tree. And Jonah got mad again. He said, what happened to my tree? There was nice shade, and now there's none, and now this hot sun is shining on <laughs> so God said, why are you upset? You didn't do anything to bring the tree. You didn't nurture it. You didn't, you didn't do anything to take care of it. I did all of that. So why should you be upset? He said, I don't know, but I'm mad. <laughs> and I'm going to pout about it. And I don't like the fact that you had mercy on all the people of Nineveh. They were bad and wicked. And I knew you would do that. I knew you would have mercy, and that's why I didn't want to go. And God said, who are you to tell me who I should have mercy on? Are you envious because I am generous with my mercy? All those people, they're saved. And Jonah just sat there. And that's where the story ends. <clears throat> and I'm not done. That's where the story ends. So the story is about Jonah getting mad. First, he didn't want to do what God wanted him to do. 
And then he got mad when God did what God does, have mercy and compassion on people when they change their ways from bad to good. So the question is, do we get angry when somebody we think is doing bad stuff gets away with it? Maybe we do. So Jonah didn't know how to answer God, and I'm not sure we do either.